Evanston. So Evanston Rogers Park. I always went to school in Evanston, and then I went to high school in Wilmette. Um, but my grandparents um, were based here in Evanston, and I'm actually a fourth generation Evanstonian. So I heard stories all growing up about, you know, things that were happening in the community, um, you know, about houses being moved. Well, my granddad and my dad talked about times that they saw houses being moved, and at first they weren't sure what was happening. But they said they, you know, they would see them put on the, they were on the flatbeds, being moved. Um, and it turns out that people's homes were being moved from closer to the lake into another part of town. And it was scandalous. And how old was your dad when that was happening? He was a kid, for yeah. sure a kid. And um, did they ever know anybody whose house had been moved? Yes, actually I was talking to my granddad about this other day, the other day, and he told me he did know, so there's a whole story there that I haven't fully gotten, but he did know someone whose home was moved. People were talking about it, I mean, within the black community. Um, so it was kind of secretive, but then not really, but that's how a lot of things happen here in town. It's like people are having different conversations about different things. And I think like this, you sharing, you working with Piven to tell the story is like finally people coming together to have these discussions about what really happened. Mm, have you seen the, the play yet? I plan to, and I plan to take my granddad. So who, you said you're the fourth generation, so who came here first and from where? So my granddad's dad, Samuel, but Samuel Butler, um, and then there's my granddad, James Butler, my father is Michael Butler, and now Carly Butler. <laughs> and where did your great-grandfather come from? So originally from South Carolina. Um, they were one of the families that migrated up north. My assumption is that they were part of the... Um, group that moved just because of the amount of race, racism, overt racism, and lynchings that were happening at that time. And did they come straight to the fifth ward? They came straight to Evanston. And to this ward? Yes, fifth? fifth ward. Okay, and so you mentioned to me the other day that you feel like you heard one s sort of set of stories and history at school, and then when you came home, you would hear different kinds of stories. So what kinds of stories did you hear at home that differed from what you heard at school? In terms of well I think it's pretty common for a lot of black children to get two different perspectives on history um, if you're learning about pilgrims and Christopher Columbus at school it's presented you know in a much friendlier warmer kind of way my family did not do that Christopher Columbus was a, a bad person and we didn't celebrate that at all and he was a rapist and a murderer and he mistreated Native Americans so I got that earlier on, and that's something that my son understands now too. So um, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's more realistic, I guess, more honest. So what are the kinds of stories? Um, you just about, you know, black leaders in general. Um, Asada Shakur, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. Um, that you felt like you weren't really taught at school? Yeah, just not in the same way. Uh, and even the types of authors that we were introduced to as kids, like the, the, the way that we celebrated blackness and taking pride in who we are and learning history so that we don't repeat things. I think that people are so afraid to tell their children the truth when all that does is just um, kind of perpetuate these systems. Sure, code switching is uh, it's a skill. I mean, it's a... Um, that I'm going to talk to my, my my boss or my colleagues is going to be a little bit different from the way that I talk to my interns and the way that I relate to them. Um, just, I mean, even in like music or even the way that I sit and talk at home with my best friends, it's going to be a little different in terms of slang and using African American vernacular. Um, but yeah, it doesn't. I guess it's, it's not as appropriate or accepted in spaces, but I'm even challenging myself to be more okay with being comfortable with who I am and how I talk in all different types of spaces. Um, so, yeah, all the time, every day. <laughs> when I've submitted resumes, I see Carly Butler. When I've done interviews on the phone and showed up at the interview, people said, oh, I didn't know you were black. So me speaking proper English was associated with being white. <clears throat> so you have to unfortunately uh, use that in certain situations to get ahead or to you know, 
know, be more palatable. Or accept. I'm not saying that it's right or it's okay. I'm just saying that it's a skill that you learn so that you can move around and navigate this, this really messed up society. Wow, and people would actually just say, I didn't realize you were black. Yeah, or I thought you were white. Or, oh my gosh, you sound just like this white colleague or this white person. Oh, okay.